Okay, so I decided to do my uh, presentation on Doberman Pinscher health issues. I have a list here, but I'm not going to talk about all of them. The ones I'm really going to talk about today are cardio cardiomyopathy, um, von Wilbrand's disease, Wobbler syndrome, progressive retinal atrophy, and albinism. And I'm really going to focus on Z-factor because it's been a really big problem in Dobermans now. So cardiomyopathy, uh, they said it was an inherited disease. Um, they it was said that it could be detected by echocardiograms. Um, and it, basically what it is, is it's the heart can't contract properly. Um, and so my diagram over here kind of shows it. It causes in Dobermans an allergic ventricle, and that's why the heart can't contract fully. Oh, press the wrong button. And then von Wilbrandt's disease is also an inherited disease. So a lot of these are going to be inheritance problems. Um, it's a bleeding disorder and basically your platelets can't uh, clot properly so you can bleed out if you have like a really major cut. And it was said, kind of went back and forth, um, the ELISA assay blood test could detect it sometimes, not fully. Um, and so that's why here it says like detects carrier status, not the actual disease. So you can be like heterozygous for it and not have any symptoms. Um, and then it said it could be detected in DNA tests, and it was common in Doberman pinchers. And actually, the chart over here that I have shows that uh, Doberman pinchers actually have what's called type 1. It's a mild form of it, but like you can get up to severe type 3, which is like chest, chest aid uh, Labradors. So, gosh, I... <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to hang with Yeah, it's the wrong button. Um, so then there's Wobbler syndrome. It's another inherited disease in Dobermans. It's whenever you have a compression on the spinal cord and um, it can cause malformed backs. And so like if you look over here, this is a normal picture of a Doberman, so you can see where the, black, the back is flat. That's what they really like in Dobermans, is for them to have flat backs. If you look in this picture here, you can see he's arched. And then this picture is after he had surgery to fix the compression. So you can see compression here, compression here, um, where it's like pinching on the spinal cord. And so some symptoms of that can be paralysis of the limbs and then neck pain with extension. Okay, now before you go on, go back to that one. Did you notice that's up in the neck region? The C567. Is there a C8? Never. <laughs> right? Did you guys know that? No animal, no mammal has a C8. Okay. So then we have progressive retinal atrophy, also known as PRA. It's another inherited condition. Um, it can cause blindness or blindness over time. Um, so like in the name, it's progressive. This picture here is a normal retina. So whenever you're looking in a dog's eyeball, that's what you would expect to see. Um, and this is a picture of really progressive uh, PRA. And basically, it, you can just tell it's not a healthy retina. So I just kind of want to touch on this because some people will argue that there's five coat colors of Dobermans. There's actually only AKC registered four. Uh, so you have your fawn and rust, your brown and rust, or red and rust, your blue and rust, and your black and rust. Wow. Now where albinism is a problem, you get these fully white Dobermans. Um, they are tyrosinase positive albinos, and the AKC labels this gene as the Z gene. Um, mm. Problems with albinism is that they are hyper, they have hypersensitivity to light because they're light skin coats, and these guys actually have pink skin, so they are more prone to skin cancer than like a black and rust overman. Um, it was also noted that they can have temperament issues, which is a big problem because these dogs are already on the no-no list basically. Um, and so whenever you breed. Any, they can be heterozygous or chromozygous, but whenever you breed them and you try to register them with AKC, they have to have a Z in their registration number to tell Doberman buyers or breeders, hey, this dog is Z-factored. Um, and so these dogs can't be shown in certain AKC events because it's not a actual coat color according to AKC. So the Z-factor, um, this kind of <laughs> causes a lot of health issues. This is uh, it's the same thing as albinism, but whenever you're looking at a heterozygous dog, it can be in any coat color, so that's where it's a big brown. That's why that Z in the, in the registration number is a big deal. So that's a carrier if it's got one yeah. copy you're saying. So if, the, if they're homozygous recessive, they're going to be completely white. 
Um, if they're heterozygous, it can be any coat color. And so what happens a lot of times is you get immune suppressed dogs and the heterozygous dogs. Um, this can be increased infections, prone to allergic reactions, and overall it's just not good for health. And actually a lot of like top-notch Doberman breeders don't breed Z-factor dogs at all. So that's why they say most of them are backyard breeders. And so I actually did find a story about a uh, Doberman puppy. This lady had a hands-on experience. She found a really good Doberman breeder, but the breeder didn't have <coughs> any available puppies. So she got too eager, found just a breeder who was a backyard breeder, and didn't ask for any lineage, didn't ask for the parents' uh, registration numbers. She just bought a puppy. Mm -hmm. It was about a week in that she started having big problems. And ultimately she ended up with a $3,200 vet bill, which is insanely high. And now the dog is actually a full-time management. So well, what do you mean by that? So like, um, I'll kind of discuss it a little bit later, okay. like in the next slide. Okay. Um, but so during her first week of owning, she knows that her puppy was urinating constantly. It wasn't just like, Typical puppy, like I have to go potty. I got one question before we go. Is this the heterozygous? Yeah, this so is the heterozygous. So it's got one uh, recessive and one dominant. Dominant. This, okay. This so it's got the puppy, color. It'd be, it'd, right, right. It'd so be this, colored. This puppy was a uh, black and rust puppy. Okay, okay. And so then she noticed that it started urinating blood, and she took it to the vet immediately because she was like, what the heck's going on with my dog? Like, this isn't normal. Turned out the dog had a urinary tract infection and a bladder infection, along with crystals in the urine. She also had a double ear infection which Doberman ears are very thick, and that's typically why they crop them. Um, so the double ear infection didn't help, and then she had <laughs> worms and just a bunch of problems. And so then four weeks later, they were using heavy antibiotics to try to treat all those infections. She had uh, pH imbalances in her urine, and then her ear infections actually got so bad that her ears were bleeding. So she took them to a specialist. The specialist said, okay, let's crop the ears. Um, that way we can help alleviate some of the heat that's in the ears and get rid of some of the moisture that's causing the ear infection. As a result, uh, they had to do blood tests because whenever you have a Z-factor dog, it has to have blood tests no matter what in order to ensure they can go under uh, anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So they did blood tests and because she, she was on antibiotics and had all those infections, they actually pushed her surgery back. Well, at this time, she was already 12 weeks old. So they pushed her back to 13 weeks, which I'll talk about in like two slides from now, where that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, so they pushed it back, and then she had her stitches in. Her stitches irritated her skin. And then whenever she got to the, uh, the actual posting type phase, she actually was allergic to the adhesive and the tape, so she was getting pus in her tape. Mm. So her ears weren't ever going to be heal properly. Um, so this is proper cropping. The reason why I said that whenever you crop them at 13 weeks, it's a problem is because, so if you see this puppy right here, that's their natural ear. They look like a, uh, a coon dog, basically mm -hmm. is how they're described. And so whenever they hit 13 weeks, they actually get a crease in their ear. And so if you don't crop their ears before 12 weeks old, there's a chance that their ears will never stand up. So you remove the outside portion of the ear, you stitch it, and then <laughs> you tape them or glue them to a cone or something to get them to kind of stand up. Right. Now is it, it's, is it either the cone or this at the bottom? So this is, is actually the posting. This is the cone phase. Some of them will do this, but the problem with this is that uh, you need the outer edges of the ear to be exposed to air in order to heal properly. And so whenever you do this, the tape is actually covering oh, those outer okay. the outer edges. So you can do the cone, the cone will do the whole yeah. trick. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to see because of the edges, but like this little black and rust puppy, you can kind of see like his, the edges of his ears are exposed. Um, so then once you do that and the ears fully heal, you take the cone off and then you get to post them. So then they look oh, like see. these then derpy it, little things. This is going one step one, step two. Yep. Because so, it's funny, I recently saw a dog like that and I didn't realize that after you crop the ear, you have to do this stuff mm -hmm. to keep them erect. I, like, I didn't know. Yeah, you actually, like, there's uh, some people put, like, tampons in their ears <laughs> to kind of give them a back to get them, basically, you're training them to hold them up. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the ear cropping portion of it. Wow. And so conclusion would be that Z-factor mm -hmm. in dogs cause a lot of health problems. When you have one copy of the yes. allele. Um, 
I wouldn't advise getting a white Doberman just because they have temperament issues and they could have increased or uh, an increased chance of having an immune suppressed system. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really advise getting a white Doberman, especially yeah. just because like since these dogs are looked at as being very aggressive dogs, okay. yeah. uh, temperament right. issues in these guys probably isn't the best. Um, so don't breed or don't buy Z Factor dogs. If you're looking at breeders, always ask for the lineages of the dogs because um, all Z Factors can be linked back to one particular lineage. Mm. Um, ask about your OFA testing and then also ask for the registration numbers. And if you see the Z in the registration number, mm. right. then yeah, basically just don't buy the dog. Um, these guys are supposed to be expensive, and so that's why another thing is a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to pay. You know, fifteen hundred dollars for a puppy, so they'll go to like someone who's selling them okay, for like five hundred, right. and those are backyard breeders. But see, you either pay for it up front or later. Yeah. That's what you know. If you buy a cheap puppy, you're going to put a lot of money in it. As if you do your back background checks and pedigree and ask previous <coughs> purchasers of those puppies. If you ever call a place and they, they go, yes, we have this breed, we have Doberman, we have two of those, we have three of those. Hang up. Here's the best thing. Well, we're having one litter in the fall, and I'll put your name on the waiting list. You may or may not get a puppy. That's a good sign. Yeah. If somebody's got all these dogs for you, run. And a lot of times, like, I actually am looking at getting a Doberman puppy in the spring. And so I've been doing my research, which is one of my biggest points here. Make mm -hmm. sure you research these breeds because you want to make sure that these guys are really high energetic and males can get as big as 90 pounds. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge dog. Yeah. Um, so I've actually been looking at researching into them, and I actually did email the, she's the top meritable breeder on the AKC website, okay. but she's also head of the DPCA, which is Doberman Pinscher Club of America, and okay, she emailed so me back and was like, I have a litter planned for the spring. She's going to be reputable. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing, because they, like you said before, you want to buy from a breeder who's more willing to enhance the breed and help mm -hmm. the breed, not destroy the breed. So. so now these two pictures go back.